Hey everybody, Craig here. Welcome to season six of the Thematic Podcast. I'm filming this after the fact. I'm actually editing this episode right now. And I wanted to uh, let you know two things before we jump into this. Number one, whether you're watching this or listening to this, you're going to hear an echo. And for that, we apologize. We're deeply sorry. This entire studio is brand new. We're working out all of the kinks with our tech and we're doing all live switching, multi-camera, multi-mic, multi-source switching at the same time. And there is a setting that was off. And so you're going to hear it in the background. It's pretty faint, but uh, we just ask that you give us uh, some grace on this episode and next episode because those, those were filmed the same day. And we think we have the problem fixed moving forward. Uh, in light of that, we also want to invite you to come and join us. This season is the first time ever we're actually filming live episodes and we're doing that just about every other Wednesday night. So check out all my social channels to figure out when those live filmings are. It's a really fun time. That being said, let's jump right into the episode. Okay. <laughs> okay, let's go. What's up? Is it playing it twice? Oh, okay. The song even? I don't know, man. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> it was down. doing something weird. What's up? I'm gonna have what to figure it out next time. But yeah, sweet. Welcome know. everybody to the Thematic Podcast. <laughs> we are working weird. out our salvation and our and our, and our technology and our process. We're and it's literally like fear and trembling. Like you don't want to touch it. No, you I'm don't scared. Bust it. Yeah. yeah. Hi, yeah. 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 I'm Daniel. And I'm Craig. This is the Thematic Podcast where we attempt to make good theology automatic. This is season six, episode two. Episode two today. We're taking a question Theology from automatic. Instagram, this six, and um, Instagram. and this question is from Levi. Um, Instagram, Levi. And, Let's just uh, say that <laughs> it's from Levi, it's and his pronounce it. Don't Levi. try. <laughs> his question is this: Is Levi. the golden chain of redemption <laughs> biblical? Now, I found it to be really amusing that neither Daniel nor I, I know what that knew was. what it was, and we probably uh, both felt like, uh oh, I, I should know really what that is. I thought it was a different neither religions like thing. thing. I'm like, is that like monastery like, talk? Uh, yeah. So yeah. I'm gonna go with what I found on. So for the audience watching this later, we don't prep the questions. The entire point of the thematic podcast is to have enough Bible in you, enough scripture in you, enough time with Jesus, where when something new comes comes along, you're like, I've got something filed away here that, that I think is at biblically accurate. So when we heard that, I had never read that before in right. the Bible. So we're both like, what? Like three minutes ago is when we're both talking about this. Exactly. We both realized we'd never heard of it before. Exactly. So we recognize that like most questions that you come to in life are not going to be like, is this theological thing? So we recognize Though sometimes, but a lot of times it's just like, hey, real life, like what do I do with my money or do do I use somebody's pronouns or, you yeah. know, I mean, just like real every, so, but, but everything has a biblical and theological root. And so you have to understand what you're talking about before you could talk about it. You have to understand what it is before you can decide whether or not you have enough knowledge or theological stuff to have a stance. So in this case, we didn't even know what he was talking about. We didn't know. So we looked it up. And stuff. this is Have what it just says so on case, Google. It says the golden about. chain of redemption, so also known as the golden chain of salvation, is, says, is the phrase from the Bible the that describes five eternal links between God and salvation. salvation. Foreknowing, predestining, calling, justifying, and glorifying. So, and again, we did not prep this beforehand. We, uh, we just... Glorifying. We just decided we so, would do the question. Yeah, we're doing it live. We just read it. <coughs> now, we, uh, we what just, we, what Daniel and I both we just immediately we thought of is a scripture that we it. do know about. Yeah, we do. Now, which is actually well, the scripture that Daniel the foundation of this question comes from. Which is crazy of, that we, we, we got about, to the scripture yeah, on the first attempt. The that's, that's pretty cool. Right. So I'm going to read the scripture that I think this chain or whatever, this descriptive term comes from. But then I also want to contrast it with what you said because... You said what a lot of people would assume, which is, oh, is it talking about basically the tulip, which is the five points of Calvinism? And I said, well, I don't. But this verse think is pretty so. big. Yeah, in Calvinism. Oh, totally, totally. It's definitely one of them. So, 
This is where the exact terms come from, and then I think that it is a relevant subject for us to discuss um, in general and in light of what Calvinism teaches. So it says this, and we know that for those who love, yep, for the we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good for those who are called according to His purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son in order that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. Okay, so it's a lot. It's a big passage. Number one, the first verse I read is Romans 8, 28, which is like one of the greatest. Like, man, it's just so nice to know that God can turn all things for good. Doesn't mean everything is good, but he can turn all things for good. But then right after that is what this guy's asking about. Like everyone stops after that verse. Right. So it does talk about five pretty big words, foreknowledge, predestination, calling, so talk about justification, words, and glorification, mm. but even the way that this described it took out and a pretty big chunk, mm. which but is what came between predestined took out and where he talks about predestined again, chunk, which is, which is what came did you catch it? Those he foreknew, he also and predestined to be conformed to the likeness of his son. That's the most important part of the verse right. in my opinion. That and in order that he might be the firstborn among many, many brothers. Like duplicates of who Jesus is. Yes. Yeah, that to make us like little Jesuses. Right. And so mm-hmm. like the idea of predestination when yes, when people are like, like, well, see, it's right there. He, right. he, he so foreknew us and predestined like us. But what, but what Calvinists are typically like, talking about is foreknowledge and predestination either... But if you call it a single predestination would be that God is determining that those that will go to heaven or double is that he's explicitly determining who will go to heaven and, and choosing who's going to go to hell. Yeah. And I would, I think that you and I, neither you and I agree with. Yeah, no, we believe he died once and for all and that his deepest desire is that all yeah, might come to the glorious knowledge of salvation. All, right. Yeah. Okay, so just because we brought up the subject now. And so why would be, he say that that's his desire and why would he do those things okay, so if he was already picking and choosing who gets to go and who doesn't get to go? Right. So those Okay, never, so let, yeah. just for those that don't know what we're talking about when we say they tulip, know, so they think we're talking about a plant. Uh, just so everybody's yeah. on the same playing field, let's 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 set the foundation. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so okay, so let, there's a few theological camps camps within. You could say Christendom. Pro- <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, I guess it's Protestantism, Protestantism <laughs> mainly, <laughs> but but yeah, Christendom. So one would be what's considered to be a Calvinistic, and there's variations, of course, and everything. But the Calvinist the two main camps are Calvinist yeah, yeah. and Arminianist. Yeah, so Calvinists hold to basically uh, tulip is just a uh, acronym. An acronym. Total depravity. Unconditional election, limited atonement, irresistible grace, and perseverance of the saints. saints. Real quick, what that means is total depravity is that you're so oh, dead okay. in your sin. You couldn't even you choose couldn't God. You couldn't even yeah, choose God. Okay. Unconditional, unconditional election means if he chooses you, it's unconditional. You can't not choose him. And if he doesn't choose you, you can't you choose him. It's, it, yeah. mm-hmm. Limited atonement means that, that Jesus' work on the cross, that that, uh, that, that um, redemption was limited, the atonement was limited just for those that yeah. God was limited choosing, atonement. not for the other people. Mm-hmm. The atonement was limited to the saved or the or the predestined. The, the pre-elected. Irresistible grace means if God reveals his grace to you, you cannot resist it. Yeah, you have no choice. You can't say no. And perseverance of the saints is the one that people know as once saved, always saved. Like, in other words, if God chooses you, you of course will be saved because it wasn't by your doing, it was by his choice. And if he chooses you, it's going to happen no matter what happens. No matter what you do. You don't get a cho- choice in it. You can't, words, there's no sin. There's you no, can't not get it. Getting saved. Okay. Yeah. So that's the Calvinistic framework, basically. And some people would say things like, oh, I'm a 1.2.3.4.5 point, 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 point There's a Calvinist. lot of two-point Calvinists. Yeah. 
Um, and then the That's Arminianist the, view is basically the opposite basic. of all of those things, <laughs> essentially. Yeah. So, yeah. okay, so I don't know how much we should go into that subject. It's, a, I mean, it, you know, I think that during the unpacking of that verse, because it's on both in both camps, just thought of different ways that will get to most everything. That I don't know how much we should go. So, do you want to start here in the verse? Or sure. You, okay. Yeah, I'm happy to start. Um, so clearly, that does talk about now. Yeah. Okay. So here's the first part. It talks about those who whom he foreknew, he also predestined. Mm -hmm. So for a Calvinist, typically their framework is, well, if God Um, knows something, mm -hmm. that means he chose it. Mm -hmm. Do you agree with that? No, that is not our framework. Yeah, I don't either. If I I happen to know that you're going to steal a car tonight, it doesn't mean I'm making you steal the car tonight. it's still your choice. I think that their belief, to give them a little bit of the benefit of the doubt, is that because we all believe that God is sovereign on no, sovereign and omnipotent or all powerful that, mean I'm that if he's all powerful and he knows that he's going to create they, you and that you're not going to choose him because mm-hmm. isn't that but basically it's, his it's choice it's the, it's the problem in all of our current society powerful. it's that they, if you have the power to stop something and don't you are totally responsible for it including thoughts isn't that right oh so um if you don't speak against every wrong in society you are doing those wrongs silence is violent Yeah, it's just absolutely silly, in my opinion, because, um, yeah, people have wills outside of ours. And C.S. Lewis, who's an Arminianist, writes in, in, he says that if you're a mom and you have a kid and you say, hey, my desire is for you to clean up this room, but I'm not going to move your little hands and feet. I'm going to walk away. I'm going to tell you what my desire is. Her will has allowed that child to freely not clean it up, even though her desire was for the child to clean it up. So um, make no mistake, her will supersedes the child's will. But but bad things happen because God allows us to have a will. It's not his desire for those things to happen. He's not agreeing with those things, and it's certainly not his choice. It's ours, and that's what co-ruling with Christ, being a co-heir, looks like. We have some dominion. Mm-hmm. Um, and mm-hmm. he can't take that back or he's he's bad <laughs> if he right. takes it all back from us just because we use it wrong. So you do believe that God knows what's going to happen. He right? foreknows every possible outcome. There is a scripture, I can't remember, but you can look it up. It's in the Old Testament where they change God's mind through their perseverance of requests. Yeah. Hundred percent. Yeah. So God's mind can be changed. He's, we know He's a personality. Right. He's not a person the way we are, but He's a personality. He has emotions. He has desires. He has things He hates and things He loves. You should, by the way, go learn those. <laughs> right. 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 And He can be swayed. And that, so, so then I would go to a Calvinist. So because He can be swayed, He must. All of His decisions are terrible because He, he can be swayed, and it's in there. Right? right? He's not totally right. sovereign right. because and he can be swayed. Be swayed. So you can be then, totally sovereign, so, yeah. so know everything that's going to happen, so he happen swayed, he have creations that have a will, and have your mind changed then. also. Right. right. All He's those totally things can coexist in this stew that God so has totally created sovereign. called his kingdom. Right. That's so that's why I'm an Arminianist, or in part why. Right. Okay, so we can agree that... Right. Well, obviously, we believe what the scripture says. It's just a matter of what it interpreting means. it. Yeah. yeah. So, for those whom he foreknew, so he already knew what you would choose so before you choose it. Choose it. Yeah. Well, obviously, we believe what he also predestined. Now, that means something different if you put a period right there. But there's not a period. There. But there's not a period there. So, if you just say period and well, I know what predestined means. And now, apply it to something, something so different. If you put a period else, right then mm-hmm. okay. But, but the verse says there. that those so he foreknew, he predestined to be conformed well, to the image of his son, in order that he might be the first more born among many brothers. Else, and those have very, okay. two very different so meanings. Says, yes, they do. So what are we predestined for? To be, to be conformed. 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 To which be, means be turned into from our old state, which becomes a new creation at the moment of else. salvation, and, very, very and then to be yes, conformed so through the process of sanctification into a likeness that's more like Jesus. Right. That's what I believe that means. Right, exactly. And if you're saved, this answers a billion questions for everybody. Can you stay the same and be saved? 
would not appear so. Right. It would appear that if you do choose him, which you chose him freely, you have one destination and one destination alone. Maybe it takes two years. Maybe it takes 40 years. You are going to look like Jesus. Right. And now you want to know why bad things happen to Christians? I believe he allows difficulties into our life. A, he promised we'd be, you know, challenged and tempted and and persecuted. But He did promise that. He yes. promised it. So the question is, oh, he's so sovereign, so powerful. If he doesn't stop those things, then he causes them. No, it's part of our predestination to be conformed into the likeness of his son because his son faced all those things. Mm. Yeah. There's only one journey for you. He's never the author of evil, but he's able to turn evil things for good, and he will use evil things yeah. for our good. Yeah. And Joseph said what you meant for evil, God meant for good. That's right. Um, so I, w- would you agree with me? I think I would say God pre-desired every human creation to be conformed to the likeness of his son. Yes. Um, so okay. he absolutely did. I actually go further in my theology. I don't know if it's further than you, than, but further than most, where I say that the blood of Jesus covered every human being ever, ever born and every sin ever committed or omitted by those humans. And all of the names of every human was written in the Lamb's Book of Life at the cross. Like, huh. Entered, entered, died once and for all. Entered, entered. Why? Because if your name can be blotted out, it has to be written first. Oh, now we're going deep. That's how I believe. I'm like, his atonement is so, like, like he so, puts your name in it. Done. It is finished. Paid. Has to be written first. Done. And then you choose your oh, way out. Oh, now we're going deep. That's how I believe. I'm like, interesting. That's how I. That's how I would. So you it. believe so at the cross, every name was done. put in the Lamb's Book of Life. Done. Where's the passage that and talks about Jesus. names oh, being no. blotted out? Google it. I can't remember the, I can't remember the address. <laughs> that's how I. That's how I would. So you believe at out. the cross, every name was. Blotted that is very out. interesting. So. Would the name Where's being the blotted out be when <laughs> you <laughs> sin or whatever, however it is that you Choose. don't re- that you don't accept Jesus? Yeah, and you basically commit blasphemy, blasphemy against the, the Holy Spirit, Spirit which yeah. is not accepting yeah. his, wor- his, his, him his and work, his work, his finished work, and yeah. he is the thing that connects you. Yeah, that's how I would describe it in a narrative yeah, fashion. I believe that when Jesus Spirit, died, the world split, the, the timeline split, his, the curtain his, tore. His, his like yeah. that he moment that when you. when an all God, all yeah, man being chooses, chooses, like chose it. The Bible says, make no mistake, you know, what to say that? That's my punctuation. No one takes my life, I give it. The only evidence we have that that's true is in the book of John. None of the other gospels record, but when they come to arrest him, there's this moment in John where he steps forward and they all fall down. Yeah. No one takes my life. No one took his life. He didn't get arrested. He allowed himself to be chained yeah. for our transgression. Yeah. And so he chose it. He asked if there was another way in Gethsemane. Yeah. And that's why I believe it proves will because Jesus says, nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done, indicating he had a will, he had a choice, and that's why his sacrifice is worth so much because he chose it. Amen. Which is all evidence for Ar- Armenianism. Will because Jesus says, nevertheless, not my will. Right. That's why it's worth so much. He picked it. He didn't have to pick it. He didn't have to pick you. He didn't have to suffer. He chose. Oh, man. It just gives me chills every time I think about it. What he did. And that's why Paul's like, well, it wouldn't be so weird if one man would die for another good man, right? But like, I mean, that like, not so weird, but like, that would be epic. We're talking about a man who had no sin in him, no reason to die, and gave his life for people who hated him. Right. Right. So when it says that we're predestined to be like that, I believe that's exactly what it means. He's forging us into little Christs. Right. Like Christians, little Christs. Which means little Christs. All right, this is what it says. And the angel of the church in Sardis... Or to the angel in the church in Sardis write, the words of him who has seven spirits of God and seven stars. I know your works. You have the reputation of being alive, but you are dead. Wake up 
and strengthen what remains and is about to die. For I have not found your works complete in the sight of God. Remember then what you received and heard. Keep it and repent. If you will not wake up, I will come like a thief, and you will not know at what hour I will come against you. You still have a few names in Sardis, people who have not soiled their garments, and they will walk with me in white, for they are worthy. The one who conquers will be clothed thus in white garments, and I will never blot his name out of the book of life. I will confess his name before my Father and before the angels. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Mm -hmm. So the way I interpret that is there is a function that can blot you out, but if you are in that category, very limited, it's to the people in Sardis who endure persecution, remain steadfast, they strengthen the church in a time of trouble. There is no chance that they can be blotted out. But if you are in that category, interesting. Yeah, there's a lot. I mean, we're getting deep here, but. Yeah. But so I, that's how when we say that for those he foreknew in that scripture in Romans, we're saying that God knows from the end of time, looking back to the beginning, everyone who will choose him. This really does help answer the questions like, well, what about that little kid in Antarctica that never heard the exact right words? The well, Bible says in Romans, right, that God's invisible qualities, his divine attributes are clearly seen in creation. And so man will stand before God without excuse, right? Exactly. That's exactly what it says. Yeah. Um, but God also foreknows how you will choose, right? So anyone who foreknows will freely choose is now on a path of predestination. Exactly. This is exactly what in says. order, so he says, um, why? But God in order to make more little Christians, little Christs, right? so who are then called, will freely choose, in order to what? Path of predestination. Exactly. To be justified. To, to be justified. Why? In order and to then also glorified. So yeah. to me, this is the process and roadmap of sanctification, called, because some people get saved, order to what? and so they get redeemed, right? They're on the path to of sanctification. Justified. The question is and a lot of like glorified. you're the call. So like, what's the call? Is that ministry? Right, is that right, maturity? Right, I think right. it's maturity. Some people get saved, not just so ministry, like vocational ministry. I believe right. it's maturity they're the hmm. because they they're called in order to be little Christ, and then they or they're predestined to become little Christ, and then they're called into maturity. I think it's maturity so that they're justified. Now we're in the book of James. They're doing. They have faith with works. Now they're justified before man, and then they're glorified. Well, yeah, but justification <coughs> is by faith. In faith yeah, alone. justification in is not about works. Mm -hmm. It's that you're justified, you're seen by God mm -hmm. through the lens of the sun or through the lens of the cross. You're seen by God. Yeah, let me see Bible. I got to go to the book of James because I believe the word he uses is justified. It's a whole lot. You're justified. You're seen. Yeah, that's a whole other man. We could have a we could have a whole episode on the on the many people on James two twenty two. We could have a whole discussion on James and and the the tension and the contrast that some people live in between faith and works and what those things are. But yeah, so. We could have a whole discussion. You ready for this? So yeah. He does use the word justified. This is okay. James two twenty two. Um, uh, you see that faith was active all along with his work, and faith was completed by his works. And the scripture was fulfilled then that says Abraham believed God, and it was counted to him as righteousness. Accurately, uh, quoting Romans four twenty, and he was called a friend of God. You see that a person is justified by works and not by faith alone. So I think in that justification in Romans, because James is recalling to Romans four, and he was this is Romans five. I think he's talking. I think in Romans he's literally saying the sequence of events is foreknown. Predestined, right? <clears throat> then it's uh, um, to be conformed, and then it's to be justified before man. Because I think right here between steps one and two, you're saved, and then between steps three and four, you're sanctified, and then you're glorified. To be conformed. So that's why it's the chain. That's how I would read that. Because I think right here between steps one and two. Interesting. And then between steps three and four, it's all happening live, right in front yeah, of you. Yeah, it's all live, folks. Agree or disagree? So that's why it's. I mean, I don't have like a strong stance. I'm just saying, if I'm reading the scripture and underlining, that's what I'm connecting. What, what was the verse you're reading? 
Uh, it's James 2.22. Yeah, it's happening live right in front yeah, of you. Yeah, so live, folks. Agree or disagree? You it's see true. that faith I mean, was... I don't have like a strong stance. I'm just saying... Faith, I'm faith was active along with his works. Uh, and faith was completed by his yeah, works. Right? Completed. Do you know what the word there means, right? It's like made you perfect. See that faith I mean, was like it doesn't mean his faith was incomplete. Faith it means it was perfected. Active, yeah, yeah. Along with it's like works. in your weakness, Christ's strength is perfected in you. Completed by his work. Abraham believed God and it was counted to him as righteousness. Right? Like that is also what Paul says. And it's quoted. It doesn't mean his you think he's incomplete. It means it was it's literally like word for word. I think he's quoting it. I you think he's quoting Paul? I think he. Or you think they're both quoting? Well, I can't remember the timelines. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good they, question. They might, they might be um, counting numbers or Deuteronomy or wherever else it is. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, have you ever heard that? The 420 and 222? No. Um, I got you a new yeah. thing, bud. Yeah, bro. It's amazing. Deuteronomy or <laughs> well, I, I, I mean, as for me, like, I'm, I'm going to dive a little bit okay. deeper into that. But well, uh, as, as that? for the original before question, are no. these things biblical? Well, yes, 100% they're yeah, biblical. Bro, can, we can agree on that. Yeah, 100%. Well, well, what we have I, to discuss, I mean, what we, me, what like, we have I'm been discussing and what people need to land on for themselves is, well, what exactly is the meaning of those things that are biblical? And yeah, you know, as for, as for Daniel and I, we, we clearly have have landed well, we have on certain, I don't know if you say translations or, or not translations, but meaning, interpretations, interpretations as for, as for of, Daniel and, I, we, and, and also you have to remember that anytime you're interpreting one scripture, you're doing it in light of the entirety of scripture. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, so I mean, if I, I had to reread that in English, like telling it to a friend, I think that this verse is really applicable uh, to like and, the and whole Christian journey. Listen, God already knows what you would choose. Just like he says, I already know what you have need of before you yeah, ask, so I mean, but ask anyway. Right. Well, why? What's the point if you already know? So you participate in it. That's the point. So your faith gets activated. Right. Nonetheless, this is how I'd read that entire chain to someone that's going through a tough time as Christian. Listen, he already foreknew you'd choose this. He already knows everything that's going to happen to you. He's so with you, you in it. In it. That's the right. point. So All right? You are right. on a no, path. This is how read doesn't that. matter what you choose, but God is going to continue to let good things and challenging things Jesus. through for one purpose and one person, purpose alone, to conform you to the likeness of Jesus, which is why they have all these scriptures saying, you know, I can be grateful in the hard things because it makes, you know, produces character, character produces hope. Yeah. And hope doesn't put us to shame. So that's the reason. There's your reason. So that through your life, being a little Christ, that to others you're, you might be justified so that others can see your faith in action and then you're glorified. Interesting. And right in the middle is your call. You're going to find your calling along that journey of being sanctified. I like it all. I, I'm still I'm still caught up on whether or not the justified part is supposed to be for other people or not. Okay, but so but hold on, but hold on. So I would submit to you that the entire context of the book of James chapter 2 is I like it all. He, James I is like, I'm not disagreeing that Abraham was justified, justified before God be in this moment, okay, but right, he was but justified on, before on, man so when he put his son on the altar. The like everyone knew who he was with. Hmm. No one can know in the first James moment, like, only God. Everyone knows when your faith is activated. In this moment. That's what I think the entire context of that is. That's what James is like pining for people to understand like your your faith is dead if it doesn't like express itself so that others can see it and know that god is who he says he is that's the purpose of your predestined life i don't know I, maybe i'm making a passionate plea but i preached yeah. on this verse in youth ministry a, a lot because we had a lot we had a calvinistic church nearby that was a great church <laughs> Good people. <laughs> they just, were uh, great people, actually. Yeah, a lot of them. I don't know. I, maybe I'm just before we finish this episode, uh, any ministry, any last thing you want to say that's life giving in the conversation of the Calvinist <laughs> Arminianist debate? <laughs> Good people. Mm -hmm. just, uh, people. Actually, yeah, a lot of them. I don't know. Anything else? Oh, I was reading. Yeah, um, anything else that's life giving any, that any would be um, valuable to for people yeah, to hear, the, other the, than just yeah, an argument. Yeah, the Bible is like. A code for humans. It's a love letter from God. You can tear out whole sections, and the message you'll get from the remaining session is you were loved and chosen by God. Yeah. In this case, you were foreknown, and He chose to give His life in the form of His Son for you. There's a trade, a great exchange made. It doesn't matter what chapters you. Read. Jesus is in the Old Testament, hidden, revealed in the New. The message you're going to get 
is that God came to earth to redeem you. That's the major thing. We might have, you know, um, I wouldn't even call them disagreements. We have different points of view on, on aspects of maturity, but all of us will agree that the king sent his son to die for you. That's the message you should get. So have faith that as you walk through all of these things at the right time um, and with the right heart, like all the things that you wonder about, or many, most, will be revealed to you um, in God's voice. There's actually a moment where God tells um, John to, he, he heard the voice of the seven thunders, and then God said, eh, don't write that in there. Seal it. I don't want anyone to know. There are things, and the Bible says that it's the glory of God to conceal a thing in the honor of kings to seek it out. There are things you may not know, but mo everything you really need, you'll get to know. Just not everything you wonder about sometimes. We'll see in full there, though, but just in part now. Yeah. I don't know. That's encouraging to me. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And, uh, I think that's it. That was a really good question. I'm sorry I took so much of the time. No, it's all good. Happy to hear it. Did I, mi did I miss I anything know, that yeah. you would s sure. say that you just like, like take take the last two minutes? I think that's it. That was a really good no, question. No, I'm I don't sorry. know that you, you missed so anything. I think time. it's, no, it's uh, you know, just like we talked about, the I point of thematic is to say, man, we know we're at on something, and or to say, I need to study more into that. And, um, I'd like to look more into no, the no, justification one and, and mm -hmm. as how that pertains uh, to what men see and all that. But I definitely think in regards to the question, to yes, it's I biblical and um, I'd like to look it's right here in the scripture. And I don't think that it means what some people think it means. And we're on the same page with that. And I think that Jesus came to die for every single person and he wants us all to come to know him. And I also think that um, it's possible to say, God, I don't want anything to do with you. And he's not going to force you into heaven. I agree. So, I agree with that. Uh, yeah. So let's keep pursuing Jesus. And uh, even the craziest, most ungodly, evil people in the world, I think that he loves them and he desires them to be conformed to the likeness of his son, just Amen. like you and I. Yeah. So, so well said. Let's keep we got to partner with him and, and uh, preach the gospel and, the and love people and pray that they'll meet yeah. God in a real way. That's awesome. So, shall we to the Zoom room? Uh, yep, that's it for today's episode. If you awesome. want to find out more, come to the the, the thematicpodcast dot com or come and check us out on the online discipleship community. Right now, we are going to go there for a live discussion Q and A. It's a prayer time. Yep, that's it. If you want to find out more about that, then find it in the links in my bio or below this video. We'll see you next time. Hey guys, I just want to say thank you for joining in this episode, whether you're watching or listening, wherever it is that you're joining us from, we're so thankful for you. And also to let you know, the only way to get word out about this podcast is by you sharing it. We don't have a marketing budget or a promotional budget or anything like that. It's just word of mouth. So if this content was beneficial to you and you appreciate our ministry, we'd love for you to share this episode on some of your social feeds or send it to somebody. Also, if you'd rate and subscribe, that would really help out the algorithm as well. And lastly, if you want to join the online discipleship community, then you can go to logicos.circle.so and you can figure out how to go deeper in relationship with us and deeper in discipleship and connection. God bless you.